Where were you born? St. Louis, Missouri. And what was your home life like growing up? Um, from, I'm going to say from maybe born to five, I really don't remember. I was born in um, the Blue Myers. But then after five, we moved to Page there. And that was pretty productive. Um, Crawdad, fish, creeks. That's where the name Tramp kind of stuck with me. Mm -hmm. What kind of kid were you? Oh, I was fun. I fought my butt off. <laughs> <laughs> I was always fighting, so. Yeah, so you were, you were a fighter. <laughs> Did you have yeah. any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I had two brothers. Uh, Marvin, my junior, and uh, Omar. My little brother came when I was seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you have a mother and a father, both? Yeah, uh-huh, family. Uh, both of them are coach. My dad and my mom started, um, we were a 4-H club at first. They started boxing, looking at, and they still do it today. Okay. And, um, who got you interested in boxing? I used to always see them hitting the speed bag. Yeah. And that speed bag got me. <laughs> And then I started doing the rest of it, and um, I kind of liked it, so I... And how old were you when you... I'm sorry, I thought you were done with it. So, I started when I was seven. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you were seven when you went to the gym the first time? Yeah. Did you like it? You liked it right away then? Well, I liked the speed bag right away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then all the other stuff just hooked on, and the more I got into it, the more I liked it. Mm-hmm. Who did you like growing up? I mean, I, I loved Ali. Um, I didn't watch a lot of boxing. Actually, I didn't watch much of it except when my dad watched it. But other than that, creeks, fishing, crawdads, snakes. It, I never really watched it. My dad watched it, and he introduced it to me, and it just took off from there. And what was your amateur record? Oh shit, I don't know. I had over 300 fights. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the majority of them I lost. Oh yeah? Oh, hell yeah. Wow, man. That's well, crazy. You know, well, I'm sure in most places, when you fight somebody who's been fighting the longest, mm -hmm. you don't seem to win. You win, but you don't win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of them, the Villain Trail Fingers. I fought them constantly, but I never had the decision. But once I turned 16, Started knocking them out, so <laughs> we're, we're to the <laughs> So the whole thing went moot. Just knock them out. Take it yeah, out of the judges' hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you won the 1991 National Golden Gloves in the light welterweight. Was it 1991? Wow. Man. It was 91. Yeah, got outstanding fighter. Oh, yeah. How'd that feel? I felt great because I never thought I was going to get a whole tournament for myself. Hmm. And then to win outstanding, it was amazing. Yeah. How, how was boxing in St. Louis when you were growing up? Plainly full. I mean, all we did was box. Hmm. Constantly. But now, it's totally different. I mean, we fought almost every weekend. And hmm. after every week, we had a fight. And nowadays, I think they may fight once every other weekend or, you know, I mean, it's just, it's not the same. Yeah. How about boxing clubs? Was it, is there like a lot of gyms and stuff? Actually, there are <clears throat> maybe five gyms, um, probably a, a few more, but the ones that stood out was Wellston, Paysdale, um, Southern Park, North County, and a few uh, outsourced ones, but other than that, I ain't so much help. And you went 9-0 and, and uh, I want to see. Uh, Sorry? You, you turned pro. Uh, do you remember what date you turned pro? Uh, and I guess who and what was the result? I want to say it was 90. Was it 93? Was it what? <laughs> no. I, I, no. No, it was 2000. Wait a minute. I got shot. 
You know what? I don't remember none of that stuff. No. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think I had. I'll find it. But fun. I can't. I can't even remember when I got shot. That's why. I'm, <laughs> Because it was, I won't say 93. No. Yeah, because I got shot in 90. You know what? I don't know. You got shot where? In your leg, was it? No, I got shot in the stomach. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Point, point blank was 38. Wow. I was going to do one of my dad's truck. Mm-mm, that was an ass whooping I wasn't going to take. My dad wasn't going to whoop my ass to give his truck away. Hmm. <laughs> truck wasn't even cute. <laughs> So what what happened when you got shot? What what happened with you? Well, you know I was rated number one in the U.S., number three in the world. Mm-hmm. The only guy who beat me in the world was Costa Zoo. So I was big favorite for a medal. Um, came home went to visit some neighborhood girl and dude was like, "Give me your keys." I'm like, "Quit playing, down. You know you always hear of carjacking, mm-hmm. but when it presented itself. Like, you ain't getting this. And he shot me. He shot me. I hit him. I, ooh, I thought he just shot me in my vehicle. I didn't know he actually shot me. Yeah. They find who it was? Yeah, actually there. They, they caught the guy. Mm-hmm. No, I don't remember his name. But, um, matter of fact, he got locked up. And he was in the same prison that my brother had got locked up. My little brother. My little brother, bad ass. He can fight his ass off, but he's a little bad ass. <laughs> he's changed, he's grown up, which I'm glad about, but he's a, he was a bad ass. Yeah. Right. My little brother was my everything. Was, and, was he in the boxing too? Well, yeah, he was. He And that's what I didn't understand. He had the, he had the Malette name, so people knew of me, so he didn't have to worry about nothing. But for some reason, he wants his own name. Who, Lord, did he make his own name? Yeah. Wow. He's a he's a man. It's a talented family. That's my heart, though. Yeah. And then you went nine and zero, and you uh, and you fight to a draw with a guy named Ken Jamerson. How, how's Ken Jamerson fight even with a future champ? What happened in that fight? Um. I think we trained up in Colorado, I'm not sure. But I know my hand had something to do with it, and then, I think I tried, did we fight in St. Louis, or, well, it was Colorado, right? I think it was Colorado. That's, yeah, that's what it was. I wasn't used to that, 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 that era. Yeah. Being hurt for so long, and then going up there, we went there a week ahead of time, but that still wasn't enough. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, in the amateurs, I stayed up there so much, I was kind of uh, immune to it. Mm-hmm. But, here, yeah, coming back to St. Louis and being going up, mm-hmm. I should have went like two or three weeks at a time. Yeah. And so you need like two weeks, that's true? Yeah. And then, when you were 11-0-1, you find yourself in the ring with Sean Bay Mitchell. Why were you in with such an experienced guy? What happened there to get you in the ring with Sean Bay at that time? It had to be Don, Don Poulet. <laughs> I really, I really think he did. I guess he wanted to test my heart or whatever. But being from where I'm from, you talk smack. I'm not gonna back down. Hmm. You know, we. I'm gonna say me as a fighter. My um, I don't know what the you would call it. I, I let my um. What would you call it? My um, emotions. Not necessarily emotions. I. What is it when um, you don't want to be like be 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 belittled, mm-hmm. but you just don't want to. Um. My ego. Yeah. I'm gonna say my ego. Mm-hmm. He got the best of me. I'm like I don't know nothing about this dude. He come in talking about. She's my friend, but he's talking about shit. I'm like this little bit shit, I do. And like mainly I, I get emotionally involved in my fight. And when I do it messes up. Yeah. And what what was it like fighting him at that stage? Were, were you kinda of overwhelmed by the difference in experience? No, because the first round I dropped him. Hmm. 
and I got carried away. Yeah. And he showed me why he was champ at that one time. Because he made, he corrected my mistake. What I just didn't make it again. He caught me, and I, it just, I just, they stopped it. So. How'd you feel after that? Did you feel more inspired to get better and better, or did you just kind of feel disappointed at the time? I mean, I was disappointed because I let that little light skinned dude beat me. <laughs> but other than that. Yeah? Yeah. Just go on with it. Right, and then seeing that who he was, mm -hmm. because when he was talking about all that stuff, I didn't know who he was and didn't care. I mm -hmm. just knew I wanted to put my hands on him. <laughs> But um, once we got in there, and he called me with a nice left, I hate left-handers. Mm. I'll fight you all day, but I just hate left-handers. Yeah. Because somewhere in the mix, I always mess up. Yeah, definitely different. Yeah. And then um, on May 29th, 98, you won your first title as a pro. Do uh, you remember who you won that for? That first pro Was title? Was that Freddie, Freddie Pimmerton? That's it. <laughs> That's it. You got that right. Yeah. So how, how was it fighting Freddie Pendleton? But he just uh, he did a whole bunch of moving. Mhm. Mm and I, I just I almost got um I guess pulled out of character because I wanted him so bad, but he wouldn't stay still. Mm -hmm. But he did how he fought how he knew how to fight. Yeah. And I finally calmed down and so I can't him more, but it was, I was happy. Yeah, how'd you feel when you finally got that belt? Did you stare at it all night long? Were you able to put it down? Uh, I went to sleep. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I was tired. All that damn moving. I, <laughs> I hear you. Let's see, the next fight you fought at the Mecca. How, how's it feel for you to be from St. Louis? Do you, do you hear about fighting in the garden and stuff? Did you feel like it was a special place? Man, and then to be on the same car with Pernell. Yeah. And just think, when I was an amateur, me and Pernell used to always spar. Mm -hmm. I used to I used to train with two of them. I used to spar with John John Molina and um, Pernell. And when Pernell saw me, he was like, "Oh, you you on this?" When I was still amateur, me and Pernell used to spar. Um. What's his name, dude? We used to bring us up there, me and E. Hobson. Mm -hmm. And, well, we used to go. Me and Pernell used to go. Look, Carlos did tell you, we used to go. I didn't even know that, though. But how? he gave me the beautiful work. Yeah. So how, how are you not comfortable fighting southpaws when you fought the best there ever was, maybe? Because Pernell, it was different. Mm. He did all that cute shit. And <laughs> And I'm just like, I'm like, I, I didn't even look. You know, I guess when you put that emphasis that he is left-handed and you think about it, mm. it uh, kind of worries on you. Yeah. And I let it do more to me than it should have. So what did you, you learn from Pernell? What did he teach you when you talked and stuff? I mean, what was, what, how did he rub off on you? I mean, he just mainly saying staying close. and But each left-handed fighter are totally different. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, so some of the stuff he said works with him, but it did with others. Yeah, I like love Pernell growing up. I even named my cat Sweepy, and it, 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 <laughs> took, it took after his his like behavior and everything. I swear this cat was like doing the craziest stuff you can imagine, just like yeah, he was. Pernell's awesome. And he was a real cool person. He was. He was. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to um, who was it that uh? Went and trained with him. Let me see. Ivan Robinson. I was talking to Ivan Robinson, and he was saying what a good guy he was, too. Uh, now, Ivan is crazy as hell. <laughs> we called him, I think we called him, I called him Mighty Mom. Yeah? Yeah, Ivan was my little buddy. He's the coolest guy, that's why. Yeah. I love Ivan, man. So then how is he? He's good, man. Why don't you go check out the, the interview I did with him on Real Combat Media? You'll like that. He talks a lot. <laughs> it's a long article, but it's like a. <laughs> my editor wants to put it, put it like a ten part, ten part thing. It's like another part comes out every day because he talks so much he can put like 
fifteen thousand words on one story, you know. I man, I miss those guys. You know, a lot of us talk on Facebook, mm -hmm. but it's not the same. Yeah. And boxing has totally changed. The caliber of guys aren't the same. Guys aren't as good as we were. Yeah. And I sit and I look at them and I'm like, how did you become a champion? Who the hell did you fight? <laughs> and then I look at some of the competition and I'm like, ah. Uh, hmm. That's true. Lousy, lousy today compared to even in the 90s. You know what I mean? Right. It dropped off so much. Now you got like Europe taking over and stuff. But I get all that um, politics. It's not about the skills. It's not about how good the fighter is. It's about who they want. Yeah. That's why I bitched about Zab soft ass so much. I'm like, when I dropped Zab, y'all yeah, didn't say that. But um, you let us continue. But when he drops me, I mean, his lady was all over the place. Mm. But when he dropped me, and he caught me with a knife one. Yeah. But you stopped it. You stopped it right then. Why? And then, no, actually, when I, I think I threw the punch and I missed, you stopped it. How could you stop it as I didn't get hit? But mm. it is what it is. Mm. I look at everything as a blessing. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you about Zab too, but I remember that stoppage. That was way too early. Nothing. Really I mean, that's what I thought. Yeah, it was. It was. I thought it at the time, and I remember that. But come to find out, and I didn't know it. Just Don had Zab. Yeah. So did how did you how did you get along with Don at the time? Did you know he was like a con man? Were you knew knowing to watch out for him and stuff? Actually, I did. You know, you always hear it. But you always think that it would happen to me. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I mainly thought, but, um, and he treated me decent for the most part. Yeah. It was, uh, I guess, um, was, uh, I can't remember, I think I, I'm trying to think who my first loss was. Uh, let's jump back. Mm -hmm. I thought that was shady as hell. Yeah. Yeah. But because, but because I was initiated it, I assumed that I let my ego get the best of me. So I didn't put that on Don. But then when I sit back and I look at it, how did he be, how did Shamba even get close to me? Yeah. So that's the story. And y'all set that shit up. That's how I feel, but I mean, whether it's true or not, we'll never know. Hmm. Let's see, what's next? Who, did you, did, did you fight? Sorry, buddy. Did you fight Vince Vince Phillips in the garden too? You fought. Yeah, that's who yeah. I fought in the garden. Yeah. How, How'd that feel getting getting that garden fight? Like, were you nervous going to the garden? Or? Actually, no. I I did. I think I was so tuned in to fight Vince Phillips that the fact that I was in the garden, the mecca, a box play, I didn't I didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. So you did. You did I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you you go. On. I don't know, I just, I didn't, it didn't faze me about the place that I was in. It was, like I said, when I saw Pernell, shit, I was at home. Hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, let's see. How, how did that fight come up with Vince Phillips? Did, were you rated number one at the time? How'd you get that? Yeah, I was, I was rated number one, and, uh, then I fought him, then I became world champ. Um, and I guess they just didn't look at me as a champ. I guess when I won, after I won it, which I really don't understand why, but they didn't. They stopped in the fourth round. Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't understand. I mean, mm -hmm. my motto was that no be motto. When you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. And whatever he didn't do right was but it made it my night. Mm hmm And then uh were you nervous like walking out to the ring or were you just totally honed in to what you had to do? I mainly honed in. I mean if I was nervous I probably felt it but just wouldn't let myself I guess go to it. Mm hmm Did he ever catch you with a right hand that shocked you? That's what he's known. For. Actually hell yeah, I think he did. Um I think it was like that second round. Yeah. He may have um, had me one. Mm. 
Well, but, I, but, if you, if you look, but if you look at the fight, I was, I was hyped. Mm-hmm. You know, and man, I just, I felt damn good that fight. Mm-hmm. I guess it was because it's my world title fight, mm-hmm. and you never get that chance again. I was on point. Yeah. Hold on. Time out. I got to sneeze, man. <laughs> They went away. Yeah, let's see. So, what did he say to you after the fight was over? Did you share any words with him? Not really. Um, no, not really. No. And then your next fight was against McClendon. What was that fight like? Which, which I didn't understand. No. Because <laughs> how could, how could. You're rated number one in the WBA or C he was. Mm-hmm. Why the hell am I fighting somebody else's mandatory? And still to this day I ask. But come to find out he's Don's boy. Mm. <laughs> it all it all goes back to Don. Everything. It did, it, it yeah, it did. It's still happening today with Tavoris Cloud and stuff and Campillo and all those people. Oh, I believe it. I yeah. believe it. I talk to his daughter every once in a while. I call her and say what's up and whenever they come to St. Louis. Mm. Uh, I try to get there and some of my fights, but other than that, no communication. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, the next fight, yeah, you came to Connecticut. I was there for that fight with Zab. <laughs> yeah, what, what's fighting Zab like? Did you feel ready for Zab? You knew he was like a, a special kind of talent at the time. What did you know? Did you know about him? Well, my my biggest mistake was that it was personal. Mm-hmm. And with boxing, you can't get personal. Mm-hmm. I learned that the hard way. Um, when you when you I guess get to your emotions, you want to do more than your body will allow, and you. you you fuck up. And I fucked up. Hold on one sec. Andrea! Andrea! Bring Luciana in there. She's gonna go to the bathroom now. Okay? Oh, my bad, man. <laughs> no, three, three little kids running around the house. Oh, well. I got five, so I'm... At least you got help, though. I hope Andrea's your help, man. <laughs> Andrea's your help. Nah, I... Yeah. I, I just got five of them in me. Ooh, Lord. How many boys out of five? Four. Oh, wow. That's a crazy house. <laughs> you have it hard. I got I got one boy and two girls. The boy is totally, totally crazy. Total difference from a boy to a girl. Hey, what last time you said that was the interview was on? The what? The interview with Ivan. Oh, it's on Real Combat Media. You say real? Are you? Yep. That's it. You can go to my my uh, Facebook page too and put them all up there too. Okay, I I'll just do that then. Yep. Good stuff, man. I'm getting a lot of a lot of feedback. People forgot how how tough Ivan was, you know. Yeah, that was my buddy. I mean, most of and and I missed the companionship with all of us. We had a bond. You know, we, we were straight friends, all of us in the amateurs. Mm. Um, Oscar, uh, whatever, not so much. <laughs> Sh- Shane was real cool. I mean, a lot of them were real cool. Yeah. So, did you fight any of them? Um. Did you fight Shane? No. No, no they, um, Shane was 132. Yeah, that's right. And he wasn't trying to come up to 139. <laughs> and um, I think Patrice Brooks fought, fought Shane. Mm. I think he lost to him. But no, I... Uh, yeah. So I didn't have the pleasure. Hmm. And uh, I keep losing my place. Hold on one sec. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. All right, after you lost to Zab, how disappointed were you losing a fight that you really wanted to win so bad? I really, I really didn't trip off of it because I'm, um, my main disappointment was I lost mm-hmm. to a big, to a big mouth kid. 
mm-hmm. who thought it was the shit. And um, I guess my biggest disappointment was they shouldn't have stopped it. Why did you stop it? Yeah. Who was the ref? You remember but, who the ref was? No, I don't. The ref, no, I don't. I, th- I thought that might st- stay in your mind and stuff. I was talking to Reggie Johnson, and he remembered how Bob Aaron was whispering into the ear of um, Patricia Darman, the, the, uh, a judge, when he was fighting James Tony, And then he got a bad decision. No, well, my thing is, when I go in there and fight, I don't talk about nobody but who I'm fighting. And if I fuck up, I fuck up. And a lot of times, I messed up. Not really. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I felt like I did when I, when I did dumb stuff. Like I said, when I fought Zab, I got curlers. When I fought Shambay, I got curlers. Mm-hmm. Because I got so enthused with hitting you. Didn't think about what I was going to do before I hit you. I just wanted to hit you. Mm-hmm. And so everything I was taught went out the window. Mm-hmm. I got emotional. And that's so why I said you never get emotional when you fight. Because it gets you knocked out. Mm-hmm. You know, but I've never been knocked out. I've been stopped, what, three times? But I've never been knocked out. Yeah. Did you ever think about quitting after that Zab fight? Uh huh. Just... Oh, hell no. Want to get back to it? Yeah. And then you did. You came back and you got a few wins back, and then you got in the ring with Arturo Gotti at the garden again. Now, let's talk about Arturo Gotti. Let's do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. I know this Thunder dude was supposed to be in the shit or whatever. <laughs> but let's talk about this inexperienced doctor that I had, and I'm naming names. Hmm. Doctor Beckton's a, um, a sports doctor in Decatur, Illinois, and he was so enthused with the of me, and he was so happy about being around Don and all that. He seemed like a little kid at that moment. But he gave me Viox. I asked him for a shot of cortisone to dead my hand because my left hand always messes up. My knuckle sticks up. The police mess my hand up. So my knuckle sticks out. So uh, he told me Viox. He gave me, I mean, he told me cortisone. He gave me Viox. Viox is a muscle relaxer. No, you bring going to take the mission. But why would you give me a muscle relaxer before the most important fight of my life? Alright, look, just pick up those index cards and read the questions. I had to come and yell at my son now again, Tom. Hey, 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 I do so much yelling here, so I I understand that. (laughs) It is rough. It's rough when you're trying to do an interview. How does the oldest? My oldest is nine. And then my boy came, he's six, and then today's actually my youngest daughter's birthday. She turned five today. Okay, okay. So, all little, all about the same age. How old are yours? When I got seven, when I got eight, nine, 13, 15, and 18. Wow. I can't believe you got such old kids, man. How old were you when you had your first one? 20. Uh, I can't believe you're so old, man. That must mean I'm old, too. <laughs> oh, you call me old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting old, too. Man, time flies. I remember when you were in your 20s. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Time doesn't Life go by quick. Time goes by so fast, man. It's true. And back to that fight. Dying screwed me on so much of my money when I fought there. I was supposed to get hundreds of thousands. I think I got seventy some thousand and of that seventy something I may have brought home thirty, if that. That's crazy. And then with with Carl as my manager, he's taking thirty three and a third. Jeez. I didn't know no better. I just knew I was with Don King. Yeah. And I'm thinking that, you know, he gonna make it to where the money is that. Mm-hmm. Did you ever try to sue Don? No, um, the IBF, I did. I tried to sue the IBF because after they stripped me, when you stripped me of a title, first you give me, um, what was it? Um, when I got ready to fight there, you gave me, um, God, what was the name of it? You let us delay the fight. 
The what? You gave me, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, but they gave me extension. Mm -hmm. You gave me an extension. And then a week later, you sent me a letter saying, no, we changed our mind. And you stripped me. Yeah. How do what? I'm like, and then Zab fought what? Jan Bergman? To yep. me, Zab wasn't shit. I'm sorry, but he's a big kid. He's fast, but he's only good for four rounds. Mm hmm. And so many people haven't showed that. Mm -hmm. But like I said, because I got in my emotions, I fucked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that, that loss pisses you off the most, losing his ass. It does. It does. Because when I sit and I look, I had him. You know, and they, when I dropped his ass, they was like, get it on him. I hadn't fought over a year and a half. I'm not sitting around there and get punched. You know, I mean, it was so much business stuff that wasn't the same as the year and a half layoff. Hmm. No. I mean, think about why. I'm sorry, go ahead. Was that year and a half layoff your your decision, or did Don just keep you sitting for a long time? No, it's just when I broke my hand with mm -hmm. that fight with uh, McClendon, yeah. that's how long it took for myself to get back right. Wow. Yeah. Hands are crazy. You, yeah, I broke my mean. third medical, medical carpal, and whatever, whatever, and it just, it took that on the hill. Or it could have been dying, part of dying, you know, his, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just know I fought, it was a year and a half later that I fought. And then I said, can I get a tune-up? He said, no, I gotta fight that. I'm like, well, fuck it, that's my tune-up. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't, you didn't ask enough questions at the time and stuff, maybe? I didn't. You, how, you don't talk to Don at all no more? No, uh -uh. like I said, I caught up talking to his daughter. Yeah. Half the people that he had then are no longer with him. Yeah. I don't think his son's not with him. Yeah. How'd you feel when you heard Mike Tyson beat him up in the limo? <laughs> I, I ain't heard that boy. I ain't Mike beat him down up? Yeah, Mike, Mike beat him up I, a little in the limo. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have laughed. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I heard one time that Don King was... I, I'm not sure if he was set up by Chavez at the time, but he was mugged in Mexico City, and there's people that think Chavez had him set up for that. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like Chavez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might too, though, <laughs> if you could, right? <laughs> no, I think I'd have got him myself. <laughs> no, no. Let's see. Yeah, Maybe but my, I think see. my... It's not too late. I'm suing what, though? What... He owes you like how much more? You got like thirty thousand dollars out of where you're supposed to get a hundred thousand? Was it signed and stuff? Well, well that's just it. Don is good with the paperwork. Hmm. I was at least fighting Zab, who uh, so called had my title. I shit when I first fought for the title, when I first fought against uh, Philip, I got twenty thousand dollars. Hmm. And of that 20, I may have got home, what, 8, 9? Yes. I'm fighting for a world title. Hmm. And you only gave me $20,000, but I was so excited to be fighting for this title. And I just knew that I was going to win, that that's when the money was going to start coming in. Hmm. Yeah. So, was Don still promoting you when you fought Gotti? Uh, actually, no. I think I won with Kurt Emhoff. No. Who I have to I have to admit has to be one of the best promoters or I should say managers I've ever come across. Mm -hmm. I mean, seventeen percent whatever I needed, he had tried to help me get. He he his concern was me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my fighting ability and you know making all this bag of money and all that. He wanted to make sure I was comfortable. I would say where well, I could be, you know, fight the best I could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that. That was all that was the point. Sucks you had to find him so late, you know? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Don took the fight out of me. He did. Mm -hmm. Don Don is still that's that divorce cloud like the IBF and you know, did you see the Campillo divorce cloud fight? I didn't say it again. Did you see the Tavoris Cloud fight? The the last one? Like a couple weeks no, ago? No, I did. I, I don't know 
don't need white boxes no more. Don't know. It's not the same. I just uh and it's Don is still in with the IBF though, that's the same. <laughs> IBF still got Don King's back. I, I believe it. Yeah. I mean, but that, like I said, that's how I feel. My title got taken away. I think Don had a lot to do with it. You, when I won the title, I wasn't supposed to win. Mm -hmm. If you roll back the tape, you look at Don's face. Mm hmm. No. Yeah. How did how did he treat you after? Did you hear the story? Oh, yeah. how, go on. What story? He had, he had a story like. Who said it? Uh, Joe Frazier said that he he walked to the ring with Joe Frazier with his championship belt, and then when he got knocked out by Foreman, he walked back with Foreman. <laughs> you know? Oh, I believe it. That's how it was with him. I so, believe it. It's always been that way. I think he did that with Buster Douglas too, when, when he beat Tyson. You know? It's the way it is. So how how was it fighting Gotti on that night? Huh? Did you make good money for the Gotti fight? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think I got like a hundred and something. Mm. Um, what was I gonna say about Gotti? I'm sorry. That's all right, man. But Gotti just, you know, I, I know a lot of people like Gotti. Mhm. Mm but I was supposed to beat the shit out of Gotti. You know, and I can't take that from Gotti as a fighter because he was a good fighter. Mm -hmm. But I was supposed to be the shit out of Gotti. Mm -hmm. But thanks to that uh, smart ass doctor giving me Biox, Gotti beat the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. So you think Don had something to do with that doctor too? No, no, I don't. No, that was my, that was somebody I hooked up with that, um, <laughs> That I should have left in Illinois and not brought him with me. Hmm. And if you put something, make sure you put Dr. Becton. Becton. Yeah. B E C K T O N. <laughs> yeah. Alright, man. Turn this shit. Be, <laughs> be, be glad I can't think of his first name. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't. He, he was cool with it. Like he had done nothing. I'm like, dude. But every hmm. blue beam, uh, he's a a sports uh, doctor, now, boxing doctor, now and all that. I'm like, you piggyback off me, you got your. But I'm like, you know what? I'm good. Hmm. I'm good. Uh, he found the the like one sport that you could actually do this and make a lot of money and be as illegal as you want to be. You know, as corrupt as you right. want. So exactly. Works out perfect for that guy. How was how was uh. You weren't impressed with any, like, Gotti's punches or anything? Nothing impressed you much during the fight? Well, no, nah, during the fight, I was so shit. The <coughs> first, I think the first minute, I was on point. Mm -hmm. And then I get the medication kicked in. And, I mean, but if you look at it, you throw a punch at me that I'm not responding to. I get back to the corner, my dad cuts to me clean out. Hmm. And I'm, I'm like, I don't, something wrong. I don't know what the hell it is. But it wasn't until we got back days later that we realized that you gave me the wrong shit. You should have just stuck the damn needle in my hand, killed it so the pain wasn't there, and I could have fought. Mm -hmm. We looked, well, she looked up Biox on the internet to find out it's a muscle relaxer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how could you give me a muscle relaxer if I fight? Mm -hmm. Well, I give it to the basketball. I'm like, this ain't no goddamn basketball. Hmm. Stupid. But, Stupid. you know, we live, we learn. Yeah. It was a hard lesson, because that was going to be my money fight. Hmm. Yeah. Would have been a good fight, man, if you had some good hands. That's crazy, man. Can't fight Gotti with one hand. No, definitely not. Hmm. But I think the wake-up was time for me to quit. And I said, whenever my dad told me that time, from me to stop because she had to, took my dad with me from the get go. But whenever it's time for me to stop, he say stop, I was gonna stop. Mm -hmm. And I think that was um I fought Mike Stewart. Yeah. I lost thirty six pounds in a month and a half. Wow. Because you gave me a title fight. Then I should have just said fuck it, became overweight and just fought you beat your ass and left. 
but I got down on weight. I look like a crackhead. <laughs> and every punch, he sneezed and the shit hurt me. Mm. That's how depleted I was. Yeah. So did it, did his power impress you though, like Stuart? You know what, when I sit and I think about it, I'm sure his power wasn't shit. But because I had no energy, he felt like Superman. Mm -hmm. Ivan Robinson talked about Mike Stewart. He, he actually got Ivan ready for his fight with Gotti. Oh, did he? Yeah, he said he said Mike Stewart could punch him. So I, I like I said because I was so his like I said he threw fakes and I felt the shit. So hmm. I don't know what was his and what was the medication and but no excuse. He won. It's over with. Oh well. Mm -hmm. So after you, I, I jumped ahead to Mike Stewart after you mentioned it, but when you fought Gotti and, and the fight was over, did, did you guys talk at all? Did, did Gotti say anything to you? Gotti, Gotti was kind of a shithead. Mm. So I just, <laughs> oh no. You just left the ring, that's it? Yeah. And, uh, and then you, you got back in the ring again and you fought Ricardo Williams? And what was Ricardo Williams like? Uh, but I had to make, I had to let them see that the fight with Gotti wasn't me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you, if you saw it, I was more alert. Mm -hmm. And I got to get to Ricardo. Ricardo boxed the shit out of me. Who's that? But Ricardo Williams. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he boxed, he boxed the shit out of me. I, I mean, because I was so, I just wanted to hit his ass. Mm -hmm. I said my, my my biggest problem is I get personal. Yeah. So you're like a like a hothead kind of. <laughs> Not necessarily a hothead. It's just that I want to hit you back. Yeah. But for you to hit me, I gotta hit you back. And I don't think when I do it. Everything mm -hmm. my dad told me, I didn't do. Yeah. Everything I practiced, I didn't do. That's why you were always so fun to watch, though, Terrell. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Every fight was guaranteed fun. You never failed there, man. And most people, you can't you can't beat everybody. You know, you beat almost everybody you fought, man. There's nothing to be ashamed about. Had a lot of good nights too. Oh yeah, I did. I did the, the um, was it twenty seven wins? Yeah, twenty seven wins. Yeah, you don't even remember uh, your record, man. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Not important. I know I had 19 knockouts. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to see what your record was. Let's see. I think it was 27 wins, 5 losses, 19 knockouts, 1 draw. Let's see if you're right, man. Okay. Let's see. Yep, 27 to 5. Yeah, I enjoyed five. my life though. Four, was that four draws? And one no, no contest? I only had one uh, draw. I, I don't know about no contest. What's the four? It was like a What's number four? four. It says 27, 19 knockouts, five losses, and like something in four. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. That's strange. No, I only had one draw. Mm -hmm. Who, who'd you draw with? That's why it was like early in your career. Yeah, I think it was doing in Colorado. Yeah. Yep. So what are you doing now? Are you married now? Hell no. Nah. Not married. <laughs> Were you ever married? I, yeah, I uh, proposed to the chick at the Zaz fight, but it was it was about money. It wasn't about me. Mm. And within a month and a half, well, actually a month, within that month, I saw it and I filed for a divorce. Wow. But unfortunately, in Missouri, when your spouse is pregnant, you can't get a divorce. Hmm. And she made sure she got pregnant. Oh, I've been played. Oh, I've been played. Hmm. I dated her over three years, and not once did she get pregnant. Wow. Then, um, one particular day, um, I forgot. She said something. She said she was spot. I know I'm getting personal, but I really don't care because hmm. I don't like her ass. <laughs> she said she was spying. And I was like, what does that mean? She said, don't worry about it. And for the first time, she said, you can go ahead and... 
man, I should have got up and left, took one home. I started, just should have, that should have touched her head. Mm. But she got in. And um, I think we were in Vegas. I had to go to Vegas just uh, for um, Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. I don't take trips like that no more. Won't happen again. Mm. Yeah, it always takes that, that one woman. Yeah, she fucked it up for a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Because I'm so bitter now. I'm like, most of them come up to me, you can have the best intention. Gone. Just gone. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do? You just live in the house where your your kids are? They come and go? Uh, no. They're, all five of them are doing the shit. You know, my marriage too. Mm. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? My, uh, my 18 year old, 15 year old, my 30 year old, they all box. My 8 year old wants to box. Um, my dad still training them. Mm-hmm. Uh, 18 year old just went to Colorado. He got a taste of that Colorado air. He lost his fight. Um, He's getting ready for the Golden Gloves. He won out in the, the area, so he's gonna go to the Nationals, I guess. And I am told him, I said, you do what you do. If you don't want a box, you ain't got a box. But you don't do something. Mm. Yeah. Is that the one that the 18-year-old lost in Colorado just recently? Yeah, huh? Mm-hmm. And how good are they? How good are your kids? Actually, um, Jeremiah's real good. He, um, he's not me, but he's real good. Mm-hmm. Somebody tried to compare us, and I'm sorry I had to put him on blast. I said, but when I threw my punches, I threw him with precision. I knew what I was aiming at. He just throws them blindly, and he just throws them. He's strong. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for some reason, most kids are bigger than their parents mm-hmm. because he's, like, 5'11", um, 160. Um, but he, he, look, you go on the internet, I, 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 look, I beat his ass. <laughs> you ever spar? Like, we, I play with him uh, a few times. And then one time I just let him know that I still got it, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I let him know, I said, it's not going nowhere. Matter of fact, to me, it gets better because I think it's something that I should have did. And no, I'm not in the gym. No, I don't keep practicing. I'm living the good. I'm fat. I ain't give a fuck what y'all think of how I look. Everybody call me fat. Look, I'm like, the hell with all y'all. I'm happy. I'm I'm happy. How how much you weigh now? About 200. No, that's not fat, bro. (laughs) Shit, that doesn't tell you. I gotta look good. But I'm like... (laughs) Like uh, Ross Thompson. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't Buster uh, Douglas after Tyson. Oh hell no! That Buster, <laughs> prime, prime example, Buster the Buster big as hell. <laughs> now I'm bigger than I was when I fought 140 pounds, uh-huh. but I'm right there. I I'm growing up. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, dude, I ain't doing none of the shit I used to. I ain't gonna run nowhere. If I run, I'm gonna stop real quick. So you ain't gotta worry about it. Mm. So are you are you retired now? Or you might get oh, back into yeah. it? Oh, gonna... hell no. Uh-huh. Oh, no, no. Once I said I'm done, I'm done. Yeah. I'm not one of the people who... I made a promise to my dad. Once he saw that I should quit, and that was that um, Mike Stewart fight. Mm-hmm. I lost all that weight, and then my heart wasn't into it no more. Mm-hmm. So he was like, no, nah, we, we done. Mm-hmm. And, but don't think I ain't thought about it. I, I look at some of these guys fight. I'm like, dude, mm-hmm. I can come back and make that money. Yeah. But I think when, whenever you let money guide you, that's when you fuck up. Hmm. I'd like to see Tarama let De- Devin Bradley or Devin Alexander or Tim Bradley. Oh, that'd be a joke. Me and Devin? Come on. <laughs> What's that like? You have any relationship yeah. with St. Louis? I mean, how we talk. Uh, we say what's up, we speak. Um, I think he thinks he's a ride, but you don't have any power. Hmm. All your shit dies out within a certain amount of rounds. You 
to me, you can't be a a true champ because as soon as the first person comes in, they challenge you, challenges you, and makes you fight. Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't arrive. Mm-hmm. Your shit stays the same. Mm-hmm. I think when that uh, the guy from whatever show it was fought him and beat him, mm-hmm. and everybody was surprised. Why are you surprised? Hmm. But like I said, I don't watch him that much. You know, I'm happy for him. He's from St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Do your thing, you know, make your money, whatever. Hey, I'm good. I I work at, um, I work, I got a three job. I stay busy. Like a Jamaican. I just, I, yeah, I just want to stay busy. Yeah. I do, I do it purposely. I just bought no, another house. Um, I used to have a whole bunch of house. Gave them a the family. I'm just, I stay busy. So you're not going to train fighters and do anything like that? Well, I help my dad whenever he calls me to help him. Um, I think once he steps down, because I don't want to get in his way. Mm-hmm. To me, this is my dad's life. Yeah. I'm not getting emotional now. But my dad, man, my dad's Superman. Mm. I can't stand his ass sometimes because he's my dad, but I love him. Mm-hmm. But all that I am. My dad, see how Superman he is. My dad has cancer. Mm-hmm. He has a brain tumor. And he has diabetes. Oh, wow. But when he's with the kids, none of that affects him. Mm-hmm. None of it. So I would dare step in and interrupt anything. Because right now, they're in his life. Mm-hmm. But I'll box her. I think my dad would have been dead. Yeah. So he stays he stays busy even though when he's going to? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh definitely. He went to Colorado with them. He drove up. No, he got the plane. They flew up. I mean he he stays busy. He does. Mm-hmm. And he he don't think about nothing well, he doesn't show us that he thinks about any of the ailments. Hmm. He's a brave guy. You know? Do you talk to him every day? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right around the corner, honey. Oh, good. That's what matters, man. Family matters, you know? Oh, definitely. But I'm trying to make these... Ooh. Now, you holding, you sitting down, I'll be sitting down. Mm. Mind you, before I became world champion, I think all I had was my daughter when I was 20. And I heard about a little boy that was supposed to have been mine. So there's two kids I heard about when I was 20 something. But as I became world champion, Mm -hmm. oh, they came out the woodwork. This yours. I don't don't even know your name. Who are you? Mm -hmm. But uh, they said all I was mine, so Mm -hmm. I got 11 total. 11 kids? 11 total. I just got five of them at home. I fought for mine. I'm like, if it's mine, I can raise him. Mm. You're making babies like kids, for dude. <laughs> hey, I, I look, I ain't know about them, though. Yeah. I didn't know about any of them yeah. until I became world champion. Mm. So, uh, I did just you... met a nine-year-old. Well, I met my son that I have custody of now when he was nine. His mom didn't even know who the hell she screwed. Mm. So you didn't get tested, get the kids tested to make sure they Well, I, I did, yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Me and Dan are real cool. Mm. <laughs> DNA, oh, we, we real cool now. <laughs> yeah. I thought you said you're, you're really? Dame, <laughs> but damn, DNA. <laughs> yeah, DNA, me and Dana, we real cool. But people don't realize, I'll say when I was young, you were throwing it at me and me being the hell young person I was, I was catching it. Mm. I say, but I'm blessed because I'm still here. Yeah, you are blessed. Not everyone goes through what you went through, you know? Not everyone achieved what you achieved. That's great, true. Great, great achievements, man. I didn't know you had such a great, extensive amateur career. I thought it was like, just like a couple of good moments and you turned pro, but you were like a real Oh, big. no, I'm, whew, I've been around for, whew. Hmm. I mean, like I said, I started when I was young, but I've Russia, Germany, I mean, most of my amateur fights 
I was on the U.S. team since I was, what, 16? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... Hold on one sec. That's Graham Grammy's home. Here, go downstairs and help her, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, my, my mother came home with groceries. That's all right. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. So you you will get into training again one day, though? You're going to get... Oh, yeah, I will. Like I said, I always help my dad whenever he calls and say, hey, can you take over this gym because I got to go. Like this Friday, he has to go. He's Leon the third. Um, Leon thinks grandson, grandson, whatever. He's supposed to be fighting. And my dad's supposed to coach his corner. Hmm. But, my, but my son's supposed to fight, I think, in the Golden Gloves or something. Uh, coming up, and they supposed to go somewhere and fight. So he needs somebody to be in his corner. Hmm. But what I think is my little brother gonna go and uh, work it, cause I gotta go to work. Hmm. I do security and I'm a building inspector. Hmm. Oh, you do security? Yeah, I do security at the hospital. Hmm. That, that that job's for my benefit. Hmm. That's cool, man. I'm glad you're doing good, though. Glad you got something good going. Not everyone does, you know? That's oh, yeah. Awesome. Some people get, get into trouble and nothing but trouble. All right, like between me and you, mm -hmm. Prentice, I'm going to cut you. I'm going to find out where he is. I'm going to hunt you for the rest of my life. Hmm. For build, being, a build, being a building inspector, I get $40 an hour. Wow. I love it. That's and cool. all I do is sit to you what you're doing wrong and what you need to critique and all that. But once I finish my other, I got two more certifications to get. That's three hundred dollars a house. Hmm. No, that's great, man. I'm happy for you. So, are you feeding? Are you taking care of all those eleven kids? Oh yeah. Okay. You know my uh, oldest, she grown. She made me a grandpa, a papa. My mm -hmm. granddaughter come over here and hey, papa, and I just love it when she call me papa. Mm, that's cute. I love it. <laughs> well, you're going to be a grandfather like probably 40 times in your life. <laughs> so. We'll cross that ridge when it comes. <laughs>